All right, just left. I'm on my way to see Mike Blumenthal. Very, very well respected, well, very, very well known in the local SEO space. Been doing SEO and local SEO for a really long time. Contributes so much to the community through conferences, speaking, his blog, and so much more. So I'm looking forward to talking to him. We agreed to meet in the middle point. We both have about a three hour drive um, to meet in a central location. I think the camera's following me. In a central location um, in between us um, in some park somewhere. Um, so I have about two hours and 15 minutes left since I started leaving just now. Um, and I assume he's gonna be there as well. Hopefully I'll get there and he'll be there. I'll hopefully do some drone footage. Hopefully the weather will hold up. It seems like it's good today um, and hopefully it will go well. The good thing is we're both in New York State, um, so there's no quarantining for us driving anywhere specifically. And obviously we'll be socially distant, far away, and I have a whole setup to work with that. So again, I'm looking forward to um, meeting with him, talking a little bit about local SEO, um, catching up and see how things are going. Um, should be fun, and I hope you enjoy it. Enjoy the ride. We're super lucky to have this video sponsored by Zoic. Please watch their ad and support them. Using their AI and all of the different tools that they have, we're actually able to increase our revenues three, four, and five times. We're not only weathering the storm, but we're actually growing right now. Figured I'd give you guys an update about an hour into the drive. We've got about another two hours or so left to go. It's nice, it's nice to be able to drive on a nice day. Um, don't leave the house much because of, you know, the pandemic, but um, since it does break things up, of course, it makes it hard to work while driving, although the car drives mostly by itself. Uh, not that this is a Tesla, it's just a normal SUV, but got the option to drive on it by itself on the highway, which if you've been watching this vlog, you probably know already. Um, in any event, it should be a fun drive. It's just I'm driving through farmland just to get, you know, wherever we're going to some park. Just drove both past Goshen, New York, and Florida, New York. Not much, just a lot of farmland. So I'll take, keep taking videos um, for the B-roll, as the vloggers would say. And hopefully you guys uh, enjoy the uh, nice farm green landscape as I drive. Be safe. Speak to you soon. Um, less than an hour to go. Really nice drive. Glad it came out today so far. Easy drive. Beautiful weather as you can see from the footage. Anyway, just still on my way there. No complaints, no traffic. Uh, hopefully it'll be smooth on the way back as well. And again, hope you enjoy the interview. Hope everybody's doing well. Be safe. I'll speak to you later. Bye bye. Alright, I'm in the town of Owego. Owego, New York. It's a great name. Any event, I'm almost there, just on the sound side for town, Oligo. And I wanted to say that on camera. I'm in Oligo, and Mike should be about here as well soon. Um, hopefully, I'll do some drone footage before and after of the area at some campsite. We'll see how it goes. Speak to you guys soon. Well, thank you, Mike, for coming out to, we're in Owego? We're in Owego. I never heard of Owego before. I've driven by it, but I've never stopped. Yeah. It's a beautiful little town, though. Did you drive through the downtown with all those historic buildings? I did not drive, I drove straight here because I just wanted to see you, oh. and that's all I really cared about. Well, you should take a moment and drive back through the city because there's some beautiful homes. I do have to fill up on gas, so I will stop at the next gas station and then take a look around. If, I don't know if you know, I, I, we both probably traveled a lot over the years, not now, right now, but I never, stop off and look at things. I've been uh, to Sweden, this, whatever, and just don't care about the scenery. Well, in the last couple of years, I've, when my wife and I have traveled, we would do this half a day of travel to a place to find something of interest. Right. And we traveled that way back from Santa Fe to upstate New York once. My son was living in Santa Fe. And we stopped at the most amazing places along the way, like the Alabates Flint Quarry, which was a pre-Columbian Flint Quarry. And the flints were unusual and they, because of the uh, 
a way that the flint had uh, had ash in it. They were unusually colored. And they had found these flints distributed throughout the greater United States pre-Columbian. In other words, they were all the way over in Florida, up in Oregon. This was a site in Texas. Wow. And then we stopped at the, oh God, this weird little water-driven mill built in the middle of the Ozarks, a flour mill to grind flour run by water, built 50 years after you know industrialization had come to that industry because it was so isolated. They built this old style factory there and it was still operational. So they turned it on for us and they ground a little flour over there. So, so you never know. You never know. It's worth taking a trip across the country. Uh, <laughs> and then the Cahokia Mountains, if you've never been there, a spectacular Indian uh, settlement, pre-Columbian, quarter million people live there. Wow. And they yeah. have mounds that are as big as any uh, Indian Right. Artifact in the world. So. Uh, driving up here was beautiful. The mountains, the greenery. Just, I guess you drove from. Where are you based? You're in Allegheny, New York, which is along 86, right along the border. So, so I appreciate you meeting me halfway. Um, it's my it's a pleasure. long drive, so thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, I guess let's start by if you could tell your people in that camera over there who you are. My name is Mike Blumenthal. Uh, my motto is all local, all the time. I grew up. Uh, in a retail business and basically swept the floors as my first job, but have always been involved in either local commerce or digital marketing around local commerce. Got involved in local search when Google first rolled out Google Maps and Google Local in 2005, uh, when I was convinced that the Yellow Pages were going to meet their demise at the hands of Google. It took a few more years than I thought it would, but it did ultimately happen. Been involved intimately with Local ever since. Founded Local U, which was a digital training for small businesses and agencies, and then helped co-found Gather Up with Don Campbell and Thomas Hash, which is a review and reputation management system in 2013. And according to your LinkedIn profile, because everything is based off of everybody's LinkedIn profile, you started at least the local stuff in 2006, or was it before that? Well, I started building local websites in 2001 right. when I closed our retail business. We built a content management system for local businesses. And I realized then that these in rural upstate New York, they needed SEO. So I was doing you know, organic local in 2001. Uh, I started studying Google Maps 2005, realized that the only people writing about it, Matt McGee, Greg Sterling, Bill Slosky, weren't focused on the tactical side of it. So I started writing about that in 2006, sort of as a tactical SEO blog. And you were probably the one of the, I think you're one of the first local SEO tactical writers out there back in the day. From yes, I, I mean, well, Matt, like I said, Matt was doing a little, yeah. Bill was doing a little, but both of them had other interests. And uh, I specifically was focused on how did it work how did, how did you make it work? How could you benefit? In fact, I went back and dug out an old ranking article I wrote in late 2006, and it's amazing how little it's changed. Really? Yeah. I, I, I feel like it's got, got it. I mean, it used to be like the wild, wild west. It's still a bit like that, but I feel like it's gotten a lot better from where it was. Maybe I'm wrong. You're more in it than I am. But. It's still a wild west because Google does not invest the resources that are really needed to keep it as a clean, fair, equitable environment for both consumers and businesses. Oh, people make the same argument about normal web search and organic search that it's not really fair also, so. Right. Well, it's different in local to some extent because with the roll up of all these other, Google has basically eaten the long tail of local. They generate 95% of, of traffic and leads in, yeah. in digital these days in local and their unwillingness to invest in spam abatement and review spam abatement is problematic in a lot of industries. Yeah, it seems like the web team itself has a huge amount of resources for spam and stuff like that. Yes. Um, but um, that's the problem doing these thousand inches, bees everywhere. But the uh, local side, it's like they don't talk about anything. They finally have a social media account, but that social media account doesn't really talk. You guys really, I guess you speak yeah. to them directly. You know more what's going on behind the scenes, but if anybody has a problem, they reach out to you, Joy, um, et cetera, for, for help. Yeah, I mean, there's been a, one of the things that Google did was in creating the forums, allowed us to coalesce as a group, myself, Joy, Jason, 
Brown and uh, Ben Fisher and a number of other folks, Crystal Tang, yep. who have who spend their days and <laughs> and weeks looking at local, and we share a lot of information. And it's a great group who care a lot about the safety for individuals and the safety for businesses. And uh, it's frustrating at times for all of them because Google doesn't invest the resources in local that would make it a, a better environment. And I assume it's frustrating for the people at Google who work in that, those departments as well. You get that sense, uh, but I, you know, I, for whatever reason, they have not made the commitment to make it a safe place. I mean, I think drug rehab is interesting, right? A couple years ago, there was an article mm -hmm. uh, in The Verge, I think, where they exposed tremendous local abuse. Google cleaned it up, agreed to work with a third-party company to vet all drug rehab, big publicity around their reform, and then it wasn't six months ago, massive amounts of drug rehab spam flowed back in. There's a no number of rehab, true rehab centers in the United States. This third party company knows it, and, then, and yet local allows thousands of new listings to flow back in. And it just demonstrates that, you know, to me, that Google does something for a while in this. In other words, they, they do clean it up a little bit, they do make it a little harder, but then they get involved in other projects. It's not an ongoing, consistent thing, and they let their guard down, and as soon as they do, there's massive spam. It's interesting. You, I, it, it seems like they invest so much of their time and resources, especially on the local side, around user interface changes, constantly yeah. changing things, testing things like crazy. But when it comes to, I guess, people submitting tons of listings into Google Local, Google My Business, they don't, they don't have any systems for that. I am convinced that Google Maps, in, in line with your theory about investment is Google is attempting to create the third discovery engine in the world, right? Search is number one, YouTube is number two. And I believe that going forward, Google Maps is there, will be e more significant than yeah. search because ultimately most commerce occurs locally. And Google has been working very hard to create an interface that allows for that discovery. Awesome. Interesting, we, we didn't get really into your, we got a little bit into your history. And once we got into your history, we started talking, comparing about how Google and local search has changed over the years, but I want to go a little bit more back into your history if possible. Sure. So you go, you, you were, it looks like a, a, a kayak instructor for several years. I was a kayak instructor for National Outdoor Leadership School in Alaska in Prince William Sound. I'd spend my summers taking uh, students You still around. do that? You still kayak? I still kayak, but not, that was extended trips. I'd spend 30 days out on the water. Uh, awesome, that's amazing. Glacial tidewater glaciers with whales and seals and eagles. And the Blumenthal's Inc. from 1980 to 2000, for about 20, 21 years or so, that was marketing? That was my father's business. I was a principal in it. He had started after World War II. He came up from New York City, upstate, joined his father. I joined him and my brother, the three of us. We had a computer store as part of that. He had photography, stereo equipment, uh, photo studio, and I built a computer store from 1980 to 2001. And that's how you got into local? That's how I got into building websites. And from there, the need for websites to be local. And from there, you know, explored local. And then since then, since I guess, I guess 2006 or so, maybe before that, you were pretty much, I guess 2000, we finished this at 2000, so 2001 or so? 2001, we closed. We basically got our asses kicked by the Walmarts, the Amazons, the B and H's the of Compu the world. Something. What's that? Comp it was a company called Compu something back uh, in the day. Comp yeah, gone, but Comp uh, yeah. they were massive. I mean, we, they were all. It was a very difficult environment for us. I mean, I remember the last Macintosh I got in the door was an iMac, one of those blue, you know, yeah. those blue ones. And we, the landed cost was seven seventy nine, and it sold nationally for seven ninety nine. So I was, and so you couldn't even afford to put one on display as a wow. demonstrator. Uh, so we closed that in 2001. I started a web hosting business, web design, did built websites for small local and medium sized local businesses. From then, I got into local in 2006, but I didn't get any clients until 2011, actually. I was writing actively about it, studying it, learning it, speaking at conferences, but I literally did not get my first client until 2011. That's devotion for you. Consistency and devotion. I, well, <laughs> you loved I, it. Yeah, I loved it. That's yeah. right. It was it was it was an act of passion. I really felt that Google was going to dominate the world in local, and it was amazing to me. At the time, I needed nine Yellow Pages books to market my web sites right. to, to to get to two hundred fifty thousand people. 
I live in a very small town, right? And I had to go 50 miles. I need nine yellow pages wow. books. And so imagine what it would have cost to advertise in those. So when Google Maps came out, I said, joy of joys. I could throw away my yellow pages book. I did all my prospecting with Google Maps and I really felt that it was the future. And then I started writing about it. The writing led to meeting Matt McGee and David Mim, people, uh, Mike Ramsey, Will Scott, people, Greg Sterling, Bill Slavsky, people who I'm still friends with. Yeah. They became my circle of friends, <laughs> which led to local U, where we yeah. you know, traveled the country, and that led to Gather Up. So. And then, now you're still a Gather Up, but you sold the company. We sold the company last November. Um, Aaron Whitekey, myself, Don Campbell, and Thomas Hash uh, were the principals. Sold the company to what is now buytraject.com, which is a marketing tech stack and uh, we are one of the seven software packages that's part of that family and you're happy everything's going well they're they're a great company to work for um but you know there's always an itch i'm always thinking about I, you know when i look back at my history every five years i've changed and yeah i think my five-year itch is approaching okay so there you go so if you have any ideas <laughs> or if you want to partner up with mike you can hit him up on uh we'll get to that a little bit later but you're pretty reachable. So. I'm very reachable. Mike at Blumenthal.com, Mike at GatherUp.com, and M. Blumenthal on Twitter.